it needs to be braced because if it can move, it'll warp and crack off. Um, and usually I prime the back, so I'll more prime. Um, if you feel the front has one coat of wax, it's okay. sort of, the first coat sinks into the wood and then it sort of acts like an anchor. So every other coat of paint you put on, you fuse and it all kind of becomes anchored. Okay. And do it so it's sort of all one mass. And they are as thick as they look with the substrate. Most paints are just like that then. Um, so I'll wait for this to warm up. Um, so different cost of artists use different things. This is actually a heated palette. So you can use these cups and put the different paints and use it like a regular palette, like with oil paint. Okay. Um, I got it and I tried it and I just don't like it. I like my pots and pans. But there are some people who paint very realistically or pop art and that's sort of how they do it. Um, so I like the process of switching out the pots and pans. Um, to get the paint, what you do is you take beeswax. Um, this. this is you know, uh, pass it on. Sure. pharmaceutical grade beeswax, which means it's used to coat pills, make lipstick, stuff like that. It never reverts back to yellow. Um, because obviously if it was yellow, everything would be yellow toned. It's, it's funny because it doesn't smell at all like beeswax anymore. So that's the main medium. Um, and then you take that and you add dry pigment, which I won't pass around because it's dangerous. But um, dry pigment is what you use to make oil paint, basically you use to create color. Um, when you mix them together, it becomes the paint, which we'll see in a minute. Hardened in hardened form, it looks like this, but it's literally becomes paint when it's liquid. Um, you can add different things to it. Um, beeswax tends to have a melting point around 120 or 130 degrees and can be a little softer. Um, so you can add different waxes to it, um, like carnauba wax or different petroleum based waxes. And if you feel them, you can feel how brittle they are. And they raise the yeah. melting point too, so it makes the surface harder. Um, if you guys are interested in this. Um, this is a plant based one, this is a petroleum based one. You just add a little bit of this in there, it raises the melting point to about 150 and it makes it harder to the touch. Which one's the plant, please? That's kind of the wax. How do you melt it? You just melt it and with the rest of the wax. How do you get it on a burner? Mm -hmm. And uh, you can also use Demar resin to harden it, and this clarifies it too to do clear layers, and that is a sap. Oh, cool. Basically. Smells like one too. <laughs> <laughs> Do you like normal? To disturb, I'll put a clear coat on and then we'll keep working on top of it so I know that will kind of remain. I can carve down into it however I want on top of it. Um, uh, I do use a lot of parting tools, play tools, um, to peel back through the layers. You can do more exacting shape, cutting out. Um, if you can paint very delicately with this, but I tend to be a bit of an aggressive painter to begin with. I used to do oil paint, I'd put like holes in my canvases and never like I just was. So panels work well for me. A little harder to sort of, I mean, like, there, yeah. you know, there's a lot of. We have a painting in here, you can carve really, really nice. That one that you carve down here. You can grab it if you want. Mm -hmm. Paint it. <laughs> You can do really thick, like in a lot of dimension. The only problem is the thicker you go, the more vulnerable it is to being damaged because if it falls, if it's more wax to you know, get cracked on. Cover all that texture in the background and then just yeah. put a thick layer on top and carve down. Gotcha. So it's, I can retain that pattern. Once uh, you have the wax and the brushes, you can just put them right back in the wax and it remelts them. So you can reuse brushes as long as they're the same color, obviously. Um. If anybody has any questions that you think of, hi Chris. How are you? Good. There's some food and, and drinks in the back if you like. Mm -hmm.
did you end up in this medium? Um, I actually, uh, when I was in art school, I took a ceramics class, and my professor liked to play around with wax instead of glazing, and so I played around with my sculptures too, and I'm very 2D, so basically everything I learned from any elective, I took back with painting. And so I started layering wax with oil paint, and so I mentioned encaustic, and so I started looking up and started playing with it. Um, and kind of taught myself how to do it and started researching it more. Huh. Um, there's a lot of hard lessons I learned the lessons I learned the hard way. Like when I first started painting this, so I was painting in the basement um, with like a little window in it, and um, I happened to be in love with my favorite blue, but I don't use it very often. Prussian blue, which is that one? It's the bad. To... I'm too careless with them, but. I... Would rather not affect anybody else with any strange diseases. Thank you. Thank you, Dan. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I didn't realize when you heat pigments, it degrades them, and sometimes the fumes that come from it, as it's breaking apart, can be really bad for you. Obviously, that one releases cyanide gas. And so I was getting really sick. I didn't know why. Well, I was locked in the basement, heating it for days and hours on end. So I was giving myself cyanide poisoning, and like a friend happened to look it up, and I was like, "That's what's wrong with you." It's, it tastes really weird. The back of your throat. I, it's like metal. Tastes like. What's that? Everything tastes like metal. It's a really it's like weird, bitter, sweet taste. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> I'm very stingy with it now. But so there's a lot of things you have to be careful of, and, huh. and there's a lot of things you shouldn't melt. That because for that reason, it's always good. Ideally, someday if I get to build my own studio, I'll have an oven hood. It'll just kind of suck everything right out. But this is better than nothing. Okay, so I've got the paint. So that's the wax, the pigment. Um, and I'm just going to do kind of just basic here. Um, just going to brush on the layer. And for the way I paint, every thickness or thinness of color is another one of these layers. Um, and I, car I can carve down it. You can do um, the tag layer where you'll carve down into it, fill another color, and scrape off the excess. That's sort of all the white writing on that black paint. That's how I did it. So I carved everything in and then covered it with white paint and scraped the excess off. Oh, wow. So it's very process oriented, but I like that. I like, and I buy my paints as I paint them, so it sort of gives good space to have okay. one down and up another one and keep going in circles. So pretty much every one of these was a full layer and all the detail is completely hand carved then? Yeah. Wow. Every once in a while I uh, embed paper in. Um, and you can embed anything that's absorbent into wax. Which some people that's don't really that painting over here. Paper. Yeah, those are those are pages paper. from a journal. So paper is absorbent, so you yeah. can embed it in there. Um, people do leaves sometimes, stuff like that. The only problem is chlorophyll will die, so it'll turn brown, but you still have the form of a leaf. So like I said, every layer you put on, you want to heat, so it connects to the layer below it. Um, a lot of encaustic artists use heat guns. I even see people use heat lamps, and they're doing really delicate portraiture. Um, some people use irons, which I only use usually for the base coats. Um, but I like blue toys. <laughs> it just works, because the, the heat gun blows it, so a lot of times the paint moves, and you don't, I don't feel like you have as much control, whereas I can just go right on with this. It doesn't always bubble up like that. Um, a lot of times I found when the panels are newer and the wood isn't completely dried out, it kind of the, the moisture bubbles up a little bit at first. Um. So, I'm used to getting burnt by wax, but nobody else getting burnt. You can cut it, especially it'll be a little cool right here if you want to touch it again. So I mean, if you get a lot of warm layers top of each other, it can kind of get mixed up and be mushy, but for the most part, it, they dry pretty fast. So if you give it a couple minutes, you can work right on top.